Welcome to the Grant Writing Simplified Podcast. This is the place to learn how to make a big impact in your community through grant writing and nonprofit consulting. The world needs you to step forward as a grant writer and use your skills to lead with confidence. I'm Teresa Huff, former special ed teacher turned grant writer and nonprofit strategist. In my 20 years of freelancing, I've helped nonprofits triple their funding and exponentially increase their reach. Now I'm stepping up to mentor freelancers and nonprofit leaders like you who are ready to take your skills to the next level. It's time to get intentional about your vision so you can create lasting change in your community. Learn the skills and strategies you need to become the grant writer the world needs. Let's do this. Hey friends, welcome back to Grant Writing Simplified. I'm your host, Teresa Huff, and we're wrapping up the end of summer here. So just wanted to check in and see how things are going with all of you. Before we get started, I do have an amazing resource to share with you. So when you're a busy nonprofit leader, I know the pressure to get grants going when you've got a million other things going on can be pretty overwhelming. That's where my friend Derek Timmerman comes in. He's the founder over at Sparrow Nonprofit Solutions. They have created a system unlike anything I've ever seen before. It's called Easy Grant. Every week, Easy Grant gives you exactly what to do next to find, cultivate, and apply to foundations who are perfectly aligned with your mission. They even write the letter of inquiry for you. It's crazy affordable, just a monthly subscription, no contracts, and you can cancel any time. Honestly, it's kind of like the Netflix of grant writing. So go check it out today. Easy Grant by Sparrow Nonprofit Solutions. Just go to myeasygrant.com. As we've been wrapping up summer, I think people are getting back into the mode of fundraising and looking at grants again, and more opportunities are probably going to start coming up again as we head into the fall season. So with that, I wanted to address today one very common question that I've been hearing a lot from people reaching out to me. I've also been seeing this in online forums and groups that I'm in this common conversation thread of, I've got a great idea. Can I get a grant for that? Or why won't any grant funders fund this great idea I have? And I want to address this today. Partly, I'm going to pull something out from the archives from a strategy call that I did several months ago back in episode 96. I wanted to talk to you about this today and about why grant makers are looking for more than just an idea. Remember in my TEDx talk in the last several episodes, we've talked about building your ROI, building your relevance, your optimization, and your interaction so you can have a return on impact. You've got to have those three elements in place. And if you have an idea, that's great. But is your idea relevant? Is your idea optimized and are you interacting or are you just expecting somebody to jump on board with your great idea and go full speed ahead when really they don't have any proof that you're in it, that you've got skin in the game, that you're committed, or is it just a passing idea? I mean, ideas are a dime a dozen. We all have them all the time throughout the day. I have an idea to go get ice cream, but do I do it or not? Depends on the day. (laughs) Maybe I will after this episode. But ideas come and go. Funders typically want to see the actual solid program. And so today I'm pulling this little snippet from the archives from our strategy call. I was talking with Dushima. And she did have a wonderful idea. And so that's where if you wanted to go back and listen to the full call, you can hear how we talk about some ways that she could test the idea and start building proof of concept, start building the need in the community and show that people really are interested in this and also get people's input for what they truly need and understanding this is how we can best serve people. Because sometimes you may think your idea is wonderful and it may be, but the things we think people need and what they actually need might be very different. We need to be willing to step back and look at that objectively and listen as people are sharing with us, whether it's the nonprofits we're serving, our communities, the constituents, our donors, we need to listen. 
And so I want you to listen to this snippet. It's just a few minutes long that I pulled out, but I really want you to understand that we've got to have much more than ideas. Ideas are great. That's where it starts. But we've got to build our ROI to have that solid foundation so that when the time comes, we can show that this idea has merit, it has teeth to it, and it's going to stick. And here's why. And then you can lay out the plan. But it's got to be more than that at first. So run with your ideas, capture those, and know that you probably aren't going to get all the ideas funded. But if you do want them funded, you've got to build the credibility around it. So with that said, I'm going to play this snippet for you and see what you think. I would love to hear from you and how you are going to implement this concept in your work, how you're building your ROI, how are you building your relevance, your optimization, and your interaction to make a return on impact. All right, here we go. I had a lovely idea and well, maybe I didn't have the right lingo, you know, most grants applications have specific things they want to see, highlights you need to hit, and what have you. But it was a great idea because it fits our narrative. And just this year, I was talking to someone in the, a doctor in the um, nonprofit circle, and he was talking about working in... Uh, on a program that was rolling out exactly what I was talking about in 2004. So I was like, you see, this is an issue that we have. We have so many people who have great ideas, but because they are unable to package it in a way that the grant bodies want to see or hear, they often get passed over. You know, so what what can you do about things like that? Because it was a beautiful idea. It was, a, okay, let me see. I think I wrote it. It was called Integrating the Rural Community, the Future of Maternal Healthcare. And you see, I was passionate about it because I almost died and I had access to the best healthcare possible. I mean, my consultant worked at um, in a tertiary institute. He's the top of the line. But in spite of that, I almost died. You know, so and I, I'm like, how many women don't have access to this kind of thing and are just, are just dying? How many children are dying? I know. So you see, these are the kind of things that, that keep good ideas fall through the cracks just because grant writing is so hard or we don't know, you know. So that's, that's my pressing. That's a great question because there are so many needs out there that, I mean, I wish grants could fund all of them, but the reality is they can't. And so you bring up a really good point. One thing that it really comes down to is grant funders are looking to fund programs more than ideas. We have so many good ideas in the world and so many good things that we could do, but those aren't tangible yet. Programs that are in place, that are up and running, that are already supporting the community, those are tangible. Those are actually happening. So grant funders are looking to supplement or be a part of programs that are in place and happening, as opposed to really good ideas. Because there is no end to really good ideas. You and I could sit here and brainstorm hundreds of ideas right now that would help serve the world and make it a better place. Mm. There's no end to those. That's not what grant funders are looking for. They don't want to be your first dollar or your only dollar. Mm. They want to support sustainable programs that are already established in place, have other sources of funding that can support themselves without grant funding. So then when the grant comes in, it will help supplement and make it even stronger to be a part of it. And the thing about grants is in the business world, you've probably heard of ROI, a return on investment. Return on investment. And when a business is looking to invest in something, they're looking for their return on their investment. In the grant world, when a grant maker is looking for their ROI, they're looking for their return on impact. And which grant 
which nonprofit is going to have the biggest return on impact of that grant money. So they have to be good stewards of that funding okay. and determine which of these is going to have the biggest impact. And if there is a nonprofit that has a good idea, but no program, that's a big risk because they don't know that there's going to be any impact. Mm. If you have a program in place, you're already serving, they can see, okay, they're already making this much impact. If we invest money into that, they can make so much more impact because of what they're already doing. Okay. Okay, so they're looking for systems to to strengthen. Exactly. And that's where a lot of people miss that. They try to get grant funders to support an idea as yeah. opposed to an actual program. Okay. Yeah, okay. With that, I can see why they wouldn't have gone with that. Yeah. Even though you and I know the need is huge and that would save lives, that would make such a difference. But the program is not in place, so there's really nothing for them to actually yeah. support. It's just an idea. But if you have your program and you get that up and running, then there's something tangible that they can support and get behind and okay. really be a part of. Okay. I, I get that now. And so that's why with what you're doing now with your nonprofit, I suggested do this small test program to get it running then you can grow it from there in the next phase and get it established. Mm -hmm. Then you'll have people involved and supporters. You can show those support options and those collaborators. Then you'll have an actual tangible program making mm -hmm. a difference in the community to approach grant funders with and say, look, here's what we're doing. Here's the impact we're making. Here's how you can help make it even bigger. Okay. Okay. I get that. So you're setting yourself up for future grant funding by starting this program and testing it and starting to track. Make sure you keep track of everything, like how many people are coming, yeah. the kinds of comments they're saying, the feedback they're giving you, the difference it's making for them or for their kids. If you have children in the program, write those down and keep track of those things. So then when you come back later, you'll have that to pull from. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I can, Does that help kind of clarify? Yeah. It will make me a lot more deliberate and intentional about making sure the systems are up and running. Yeah. Okay. The penny just dropped. Good. Can you relate to Dushima's question? She had a wonderful idea. She truly had a heart to serve in her community, but there really was nothing to fund yet. The grant maker wanted to see that she was actually doing the work and had a fundable project happening. So that is what you need to think about. And I also wanted to point out, I do have a couple of spots left this month for strategy calls. If you are interested in that, you can grab one of those. We can do the same thing as I did with Dushima. We can sit down, talk through what you're working on, what you're wanting to do, and we can map out a clear strategy plan so that you know exactly your next steps to get you moving forward again. I know sometimes we kind of get high centered and we get stuck and you just need a bit of momentum. You need that shove to push you forward again and help you know what direction to go. So let's book a call. I'll give you a friendly shove and we'll get you moving again. All right, friends, have a great week and go change your world.